Many thanks um, to Paola for suggesting that I might say a few words uh, this evening about Dasein's analysis. Um, in anticipation of the publication later this year of the third of the SEA dialogue series, which is the renaissance of Dasein's analysis. What does existential really mean? Which I prepared in collaboration with um, a Viennese colleague, Dasein's analyst, Tamas Fazekis. Um, I hope that as a result of tonight's discussion, you will read our dialogues uh, when they're published. Um, there's so much more to say about Dasein's analysis than I will be able to compress in a little under two hours. So this will be, for the most part, <clears throat> a discussion for the newcomer <clears throat> to Dasein's analysis. Um, but I hope <clears throat> that some of you who have a greater familiarity with this will um, uh, have some penetrating questions as we go along. <clears throat> but I'm assuming that it's, it's a rather new thing for most of the people who are, are uh, uh, tuning in, or it's not especially familiar uh, uh, recently. So first, a few words are in order. Uh, I have a prepared statement. It shouldn't last too long. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, we'll have most of the time to, to, to talk with each other, uh, to take some questions, have some discussion. <clears throat> and do let me know if, if the volume and such is, is, is okay. I think it should be. So first, a few words are in order about the word uh, Dasein's analysis. Then by way of introduction, um, I will briefly review the history of Dasein's analysis as an approach to therapy up to the present time. I will conclude with some comments on its current status and prospects as I see them. My perspective is that what the founder of what we'll term psychotherapeutic Dasein's analysis left us was not fully realized in his practice, but its time has come. Uh, a sketch of Dasein's analysis was drawn by uh, Medard Boss, whom I'll talk about uh, shortly. But its promise is only now beginning to be kept. Um, for many young counselors and psychotherapists, the word Dasein's analysis may be new. Throughout its history outside of German speaking Europe, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, uh, the word has fallen hard on the air uh, for, for, uh, for us Anglophones. So to those unfamiliar with German word patterns, it's difficult to sound out and pronounce even uh, on first uh, sight, but let's have a go at it. Dasein's analysis is a direct transliteration of the German word Dasein's Analyse. So you can hear there's not much of a difference, except for the suffix, they sound pretty much exactly the same. Um, a little bit more about the word. Dasein's analysis is a compound of the German word Dasein and the English word analysis which is based on the Greek uh, uh, analysis. The word is modeled on the word psychoanalysis. So by the way, is the practice of Dasein's analysis itself modeled on psychoanalysis. Taking apart the word psychoanalysis, we easily see it means analysis of the psyche. Similarly, we can say Dasein's analysis is analysis of the Dasein. Now, since everyone thinks 
she knows what psyche and analysis denote. The meaning of psychoanalysis seems straightforward enough, uh, but it isn't really. Since Freud's practice was an analysis of man's soul, capital M, man's soul, not his psyche. Uh, the word itself is a bit misleading and has been for more than a century. Um, the latter or the psyche part was reserved for his theoretical model of, or, or metapsychology. Uh, like the term psyche, psychoanalysis became a household word. Uh, psychoanalysis has been familiar now for more than a century since the first English translations of Freud were made by uh, Abraham Brill here in the States in 1912. And then of course there followed very quickly the, the uh, long, long labor of the Strachey's and others uh, there in, in London. Uh, filmmakers such as Alfred Hitchcock were fascinated by psychoanalysis. So were popular novelists uh, such as J.D. Salinger here in the States. But as the word Dasein's analysis still remains foreign to most Anglophone readers and speakers. Uh, just a bit more on, on, on words. Freud coined the term psychoanalysa, hyphenated at first, by the way, as the name for a method of research, a theory of the mind or the psyche, and his technique of therapeutic practice, uh, the therapy of uh, the soul. In practice, analysis of the soul, if we really translate this word psychoanalysis properly, uh, nevertheless consists in a dissection of the personality, according to Freud, uh, into its uh, mental elements, ideas, images, wishes, feelings, which are then in psychoanalysis decoded by tracing their verbal associations to memories and patterns of memories uh, from early childhood experiences. Freud believed that the most pressing contents of our soul were hidden away in what he termed the unconscious. There he said, we find much that we know in some sense, but do not consciously know. An odd sort of knowing, yes? An odd sort of knowledge. Uh, well, it, it, its content makes surprise appearances though, as we all know, slips of the tongue, jokes, dreams, uh, and symptoms. The term Dasein's analysa, then, just to sum this part up, had its origin as a version of psychoanalysa. This revision, um, this new version of psychoanalysis occurred when in the 1940s, the Swiss spa psychiatrist and friend of Freud's, Ludwig Binswanger, lived from 1881 to 1966, uh, began to speak of what he termed Dasein's analysis, Dasein's analysis, rather than psychoanalysis of his good friend uh, uh, Freud's uh, practice. Um, that is what we will want to call psychiatric Dasein's analysis. And there's a very important distinction that I'll make uh, shortly between psychiatric Dasein's analysis and what uh, we're here to talk about uh, tonight. For Binswanger, this was now uh, in the setting, uh, the inpatient setting in which he worked, was an analysis of Dasein rather than the soul. He and Freud uh, wrote to each other uh, 
about this. That the, the correspondence is, is, is very interesting to follow. Um, according to Binswanger, being human in and of itself entails a certain basic suffering in all of us, which emanates from the knowledge we have of our existence. Uh, such suffering, Binswanger said, was unavoidable to some degree in everyone, but in some individuals, it became more bothersome. To finish with Binswanger, providing love, Binswanger thought, in the setting in which he practiced again, which was a very uh, uh, comfortable spa sanatorium setting with his well-heeled um, patients. Providing love in that setting, Binswanger thought, is the psychiatrist's means of alleviating the greater suffering about existence that some individuals experience. Uh, it then moderates to just the everyday sort of suffering uh, in our existence that we all know as human beings. So much, uh, so far, Binswanger. Not long after, by the way, the, there's some who would suggest that it wasn't Binswanger himself who first used the term, but that's open to some discussion. Jakob Wirsch, another Swiss, uh, might have been the one to suggest that uh, here was a, a good term for what Binswanger was thinking about, um, a, a nice way to take psychoanalysis and turn it into another kind of analysis uh, verbally. Now, moving along, not long after Binswanger's innovation, another Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who had been in analysis with Freud reconceived Dasein's analysis as therapeutic Dasein's analysis, the psychotherapeutic Dasein's analysis, which was to be distinguished from the psychiatric Dasein's analysis uh, of Binswanger for some reasons that'll become clear, most important of which uh, being that uh, it was provided in the sort of setting that Freud had provided psychoanalysis, namely on an outpatient basis, as we would say, uh, in the privacy of uh, a part of the home, usually uh, the analyst. Well, this was Maydard Boss. Medard Boss, um, born 1903, died in 1990. Uh, just to add a bit about him from, a, from his biography, he was also closely associated with Freud's presumptive heir, Carl Gustav Jung, for nearly a decade, uh, worked very closely with, with Jung at the Burg Hölzli Hospital in Zurich, about an hour from Binswanger's uh, spa sanitarium, which was in Kreuzlingen on Lake Constance, um, the Bodensee. Well, Boss denied against Binswanger that there is an inherent suffering about existing, about existing. Instead, he saw that in certain individuals, the freedom to realize their possibilities had been constricted. It's a very different take uh, than had been Binswanger's. He also emphasized the spiritual life of his patients, something that Freud and Binswanger, as we know, had discarded as a mere remnant of a childhood dependency, as we know from Freud and his followers, spiritual life is, a, is an illusion. Um, we're fundamentally reasoning beings. Rationality is at stake in those who are neurotic, said Freud. Uh, the spiritual life doesn't uh, play a part. Uh, uh, 
except as perhaps a symptom for something that has gone wrong. By contrast, Boss uh, gave it a, a central place uh, in his psychotherapeutic Dasein's analysis. And uh, just a quick note on that, uh, in his late midlife, Boss um, fully uh, trained psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, had worked in the uh, Swiss Army, um, had a bit of a crisis. And uh, while he had been invited to lecture in India and Sri Lanka, what was then called Sri Lanka, uh, he turned it into a, a, a sort of pilgrimage, um, a voyage. And so apart from lecturing, which he did uh, in Lucknow and other places uh, in the subcontinent, he spent uh, two very long periods of time uh, in meditation practice with um, uh, more than one guru, one of whom, uh, Govinda Kaul, he uh, speaks of very highly in his book, a wonderful book I would recommend for everybody to get, uh, get a hold of if possible, A Psychiatrist Discovers India. Um, Boss had been born into the sort of standard Swiss Protestantism um, of his era, born in 1903. But here was somebody who in his, in the 50s, right, in his 50s, uh, decided to <clears throat> make this voyage, uh, something was troubling him, uh, and off he went, uh, not once, but twice, uh, and spent, uh, there are photos of him uh, in ashrams. Uh, now this is, you can imagine a very starched, uh, uh, patrician, uh, Swiss psychiatrist in an ashram at the age of 50, Something has happened that, uh, that uh, has compelled him to do this. He, he returned um, uh, that little anecdote uh, to point out perhaps one of the sources of why the spiritual, uh, not, the, not the religious, not the church connection, but the spiritual dimension was so important for those with whom he worked in what he was now calling psychotherapeutic Dasein's analysis. Both Binswanger and Boss had taken their cue for modifying psychoanalysis from the German phenomenologist Martin Heidegger. Uh, Martin Heidegger, born in 1889, died in 1976. This is Heidegger, uh, the Heidegger, who introduced Dasein as a technical term uh, in his early writing. <clears throat> Binswanger <clears throat> eventually admitted that he had gotten Heidegger wrong. Um, Buss, who worked closely with Heidegger regularly from 1959 to 1969 in a series of seminars for psychiatrists, was said to have gotten Heidegger right. Uh, some of you will know the, of these as the famous Zolikon uh, seminars, named after a district in Zurich where Bus uh, lived, and where happily I can say I had a, <clears throat> an interview uh, of about 45 minutes with him in, in, in 1976. Um, more of that perhaps a little bit later on. Um, in fact, Heidegger and Boss not only worked closely in this connection uh, as co-teachers, co-seminar directors, but eventually they traveled together. Uh, their wives, uh, their families traveled together. Sometimes they traveled alone. Um, getting Heidegger actually out of a sort of funk that he was in uh, following the end of World War II. Um, Buss, uh, uh, in a sense, became Heidegger's uh, Dasein's analyst, uh, though I don't think 
either one of them would have uh, admitted that. But their long time, uh, their long trips and times together uh, certainly allowed for this. Some of what remains of their meetings, conversations, and letters, but just little excerpts, bits of that uh, sort of thing are published in the Solicon seminars. And again, for those of you who know this already so well, it's, it's uh, 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 no news. But if, if this is new to you, uh, it, it's very interesting to compare the substantive uh, material in the protocols of the seminars themselves, which ran again for a decade usually twice a year for a couple of weeks running. Uh, and these <clears throat> very private uh, uh, conversations and, and letters, uh, mo most of which are still hiding out uh, somewhere. Uh, that is, for the most part, uh, due to Boss's uh, family and estate who have pointed out that there's a lot of sensitive material in Boss's papers about other patients, but there's probably also a lot of sensitive material about uh, the collaboration uh, between Heidegger uh, and Boss. The last thing I'd mention about Heidegger and Boss um, in, uh, personally is that Heidegger eventually oversaw <clears throat> the writing page by page. He saw every page of manuscript types manuscript of Boss's uh, magnum opus published in 1971, Existential Foundations of Medicine and Psychology. Uh, and to put this in the time perspective, uh, this is now just uh, uh, two years after the last of the seminars and five years uh, before uh, Heidegger's death in 1976. They, he was an old man when he gave the seminars. He was a much older man when he worked on the manuscript with Boss. Uh, but we know that he did, and we have um, uh, uh, lots of examples of, of the uh, in the papers of Heidegger that are held in, in Marburg. Um, one other note about their personal relationship um, that might account for why so much of it was censored, uh, so much of the private stuff was censored, is that something went wrong in the relationship uh, in the last four or five years, and, and I'm not quite sure uh, what it was about, but it's of interest. Uh, it, it's a work in progress to, to discover what that might have been. But for the most part, from about 1942 until 1972, uh, Boss was preoccupied with Heidegger, and uh, as I've recounted, uh, 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 spent quite a lot of time together. Uh, uh, we're interested in people and their relationships, um, and so it's perhaps worth noting that this is the only real collaboration that Heidegger ever had with another writer, with another thinker. He was very much an isolate. Um, so for him to have done what he did with Boss over, over the long period of time um, uh, speaks to something important, I think, in the relationship um, and certainly in the way Boss began to construe human relationships from a Dasein's analytic perspective, from a Heideggerian perspective. Well, I think. Anyway, we will be misled if we try to understand Dasein's analysis in the same way we do psychoanalysis, because here now we want to see some differences emerging. In Dasein's analysis, there is no dissection of the personality or decoding of the contents of the mind recovered by memory. Instead, for Dasein's analysis, Analysis takes on its original Greek meaning, and he got this from Heidegger. Uh, the original Greek uh, doesn't mean to take part, to dissect, uh, as in chemical analysis. It means to free up or loosen up. P pieces might remain, parts 
might remain, but the impetus was to loosen, free what had been uh, uh, compacted, uh, perhaps pressed together to, to form that image. And um, in this case, the analysis, the freeing up is of Dasein. But what is this Dasein that is to be freed up? Uh, in ordinary everyday German, the word Dasein, if you take a taxi drive uh, somewhere, uh, it's common enough to hear, just means existence. Uh, philosophically, it means existence as a predicate, a possible predicate of any being, uh, of anything that is. I'll be able to take a little philosophical side bar here. Um, we therefore say lions and tigers exist, but unicorns don't exist. Right? They're imaginary. Lions and tigers are real, since we can perceive them with our senses, and this confirms that they exist. This is the predicate existence added on to anything else you might want to say about that uh, creature. It's the most famous being, the existence of which has been pondered, is, of course, God. God. Does God exist, you ask? So proofs for the existence of this being, God, that there is, there's the predicate, is existence. God, the, the subject matter of theology, uh, heroic attempts at proofs for the existence of God were contrived by Catholic theologians, uh, including Anselm, Canterbury, Thomas Aquinas, who probably is as, as the doctor of the church most uh, associated with this identified five such proofs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, along came the German philosopher, uh, Immanuel Kant, who presented each proof that had come down from scholasticism with the full power of reason, flawless reason reasoning for the existence of God, and then went on to dismantle each proof with the same logical precision. Proving the existence of God proved to be more difficult than that of lions and tigers. What well, speak of the existence of less important beings than God, of course, um, and that would be, for our purposes, human beings, human beings, people not animal beings, not divine beings. During the first quarter of the 20th century, uh, turn to Heidegger, uh, between 1923 and 1927, roughly, um, Heidegger made the existence of human beings the topic of his major work. His major work, um, came to be translated as being and time. In it is what he called an analytics of existence. An analytics of existence. Um, I probably should be able to show this <clears throat> to you, but the word is Dasein's analytique. You can hear it, uh, analytics of Dasein. <clears throat> in his major work, provided the basis for the revision of psychoanalysis known as Dasein's analysis. Now the soul of man, soul of men and women, was no longer the focus of therapy, but rather his or her Dasein. By the way, the term analytics here in Dasein's analytic uh, derives from Aristotle's usage uh, in his logic, in his logical works, where it refers to simply the careful, stepwise reasoning according to the rules of logic. Um, yet another sense of analytic, of analysis, of, of analysian. 
So everyone who is an existential analyst uh, will be familiar with Heidegger's analytics of the structure of existence since it's the foundation of all existential psychotherapies. Um, we can skip further discussion of it. On the other hand, we need to be careful, I think, to distinguish between this analytics from the analysis of Dasein's analysis, the loosening up or freeing up of Dasein of existence. So you see, Heidegger's fresh usage of this word Dasein turns it, takes an everyday um, commonly used words and gives it a technical meaning, which no longer refers to a predicate of beings. But allow me a little bit more philosophical aside, um, but instead to what he called the ontological structure that is to say, the possibility of any human being's human experience and behavior. This was the source of the idea of Dasein's analysis and uh, historically for all of the forms of existential analysis, which can ultimately be traced back to this, uh, to, to this work, to, to to a very short passage, actually, in being in time. Uh, it's been forgotten. I uh, hope I'll be able to <clears throat> remedy that a little bit tonight uh, because there's an important distinction here that uh, is relevant to making Dasein's analysis, uh, at least as I understand it, um, uh, uh, in, uh, compelling, uh, clear and compelling. So once again, Dasein, back to this word, is the structure of possibility of a human being's existing. Now, here again, there are two words that are very different that sound alike. Heidegger's talk of Dasein, existence, is to be distinguished from what he called our existing, and for this he used the word existence, existence. Uh, you can still find this in the uh, existence uh, uh, therapy um, uh, uh, that is, is commonly practiced, Alfred Langley, for example. By the way, I, I imagine everybody <clears throat> is aware of perhaps two years ago, the Wiley Handbook of Existential Analysis. Um, and so I'd refer everybody to go back and, and look at this panoply of, of, of forms of uh, existential um, psychotherapy. But my point is just uh, this, uh, that Heidegger is talking in two levels, at two levels. The ontological level, which is Dasein, namely the possibility for any kind of, any instance of existing mind, yours, existence. It's the structure of the very possibility of being human. On the other hand, existing, existence, says Heidegger, is the very essence of Dasein, of existence. So I hope the two words and and the possible complications that they, they raise become a little, uh, uh, becomes a little clearer. The, the new usage, which at first presented some difficulties, especially in squaring it with the everyday use of the term, was the brainchild of, uh, of, of this uh, uh, country lad. Some of you have read about Heidegger, know something about him, but, um, Perhaps uh, you don't know that uh, he was uh, very much a, a rural um, lad, uh, Catholic, uh, the first son of conservative Catholic parents who lived in the Black Forest area of Southwest Germany, close to uh, Switzerland. Uh, 
so Catholic were they that the Heideggers named their son after the patron saint of the church, where young Martin's father was a sexton. And he was also a, a, as a, a barrel maker in town. So this was not a wealthy uh, family. This was, um, a, for example, Binswanger came from a very long line of, of, of psychiatrists. Um, Carl Jasper is another close associate uh, uh, professionals, uh, people of, of standing. Uh, Heidegger was, was, was none of that. Uh, uh, he was, he was uh, uh, quite shy. Uh, he uh, was sometimes a little hard to get along with, but the point of this bio biographical detail is that he was, he was not the sort of sophisticate that you would expect to have produced uh, the ideas that, that, as far as I can tell, have brought us all here together and perhaps have uh, shaken up uh, uh, psychoanalysis at its roots, which of course are there in, in Freud's psychoanalysis. In 1927, <clears throat> a bit more, under pressure uh, to publish, Heidegger brought out part of a planned much larger work that I've mentioned, um, Being in Time. This is where the structure was spelled out. Um, you may not know that it was uh, hurriedly written uh, it was unfinished. It was flawed. Uh, if you try to read it in the first translation from 1962, it's impossible. Um, I read it in 1967 for, this, for the first time, and I believed I understood what I was reading, but I've since learned that, that most of it simply just doesn't make sense unless you look at the German. And so it, that, that took a decade or two to, for, for me to catch up. But it's always surprising to me uh, to think of this book and what's in it as, as being some sort of gospel. It was actually uh, not. It, it, it was very much uh, a series of uh, rapidly uh, produced thoughts, uh, a, a freak association. Uh, although we added certain structure uh, at the end, headings and, and the like. In any case, uh, it, to continue a bit more with the, the philosophical background, he turned what he was doing here, a hermeneutic, phenomenological ontology of the human being. Uh, uh, a phenomenological approach to the human being. Uh, Unlike that of his teacher, who had originated phenomenology, uh, Edmund Husserl, one that was hermeneutic, based on interpretation, not on uh, the direct intuition uh, of, of essences, uh, mostly in consciousness, which he had learned from Husserl. Uh, but this fundamental ontology, at the core of which was this strikingly new notion of Dasein. It was a momentous work that made possible all the forms of existential analysis and above all, uh, Dasein's analysis. What a mouthful, hermeneutic phenomenological ontology. Um, again, uh, for, for some it, it's, it's uh, well known, for others it uh, would require some more discussion to make it a little bit clearer. In any case, it won't be necessary to do that to, to get to what we have to say about Dasein's analysis. Heidegger later admitted, by the way, also that his project had failed, um, that uh, while the book was important and he was certainly glad that it made him famous, um, it uh, uh, was uh, a failure. Um, and uh, yeah, out of it came this notion um, of Dasein uh, that if we dig far enough, each of us will find is at the core of our practice, whatever we may call it as existential analysts. And in an English translation, okay, enough of Heidegger, in an English translation of the first book to compare psychoanalysis and Dasein's analysis, which was written by Maydard Boss, an error was made that has had consequences which remain today. We need to clear this up a bit. 
Ed Abbas, as it turns out, never wrote a book called Psychoanalysis and Dasein's Analysis. That's how it was published. Uh, that would have rendered Psychoanalysis and Dasein's Analysis. Uh, it would have compared uh, Freud's science with Boss's new approach to psychotherapy based on Heidegger's philosophy. That is true. What he did publish, however, was a book called Psychoanalysis and the Analytics of Dasein. The actual title of the book was Psycho Psychoanalyse und Dasein's Analytik. There was no mention of analysis in there. It referred essentially to this philosophical notion um, uh, uh, from Heidegger's uh, fundamental ontology or ontology of the human being, of the being there. By the way, if you take this word Dasein uh, apart, it's uh, simply being there. Uh, and uh, I, I might say then to everybody, your, thank you for your Dasein. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, that gets to the heart of the, the notion uh, pretty, pretty quickly. But in any case, Boss's book uh, led to some uh, mischief um, in the mistranslation of the title. Um, in it, he does compare psychoanalysis with uh, the new Dasein's analysis, um, but uh, not from the perspective of Freud's metapsychology, but from the perspective of Heidegger's analytics uh, structure, this structure of Dasein, uh, famously including uh, anxiety, guilt, uh, language, um, uh, and, and above all, being with, which we'll come to quite soon. So much mis mischief resulted from the mistranslation of the title. Uh, hopefully, uh, by the end of our discussion this evening, we'll have gained some clarity about the matter. So briefly, the analytics of Dasein is a philosophical matter, but the analysis of existence, that's our interest, uh, is a matter for therapists. Of importance to those of us who work with people in the therapeutic situation is an element of which there are many of the structure of Dasein that I just mentioned uh, that will occupy us now for most of the rest of uh, this part of uh, my presentation. And that is what he called being with, mit sein, uh, mit with sein, being, being with as an essential structural element of Dasein existence and equally important with all of the other elements, being with implies that a single human being is inconceivable. This is one of the first remarkable uh, conclusions about uh, Dasein's analysis that we uh, have to make. This idea uh, that it's inconceivable to uh, uh, imagine an isolated uh, uh, Dasein. By its very nature, uh, it consists, among other things, in being with others from the start. Um, to speak of an I implies that the he or she of that I is always already a being with other human beings. In the beginning is the we. To be human then is first to be there with others from the start. Be there with. Such being, by the way, uh, it makes possible even the famous I-thou relationship described by the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber, another Martin, who, by the way, was a colleague and friend of Martin Heidegger, um, 
they met often, uh, were close. Uh, he was close to Viktor Frankl as well. Uh, I think many of you know uh, really intimately uh, uh, his work, you know it really intimately. <clears throat> the correspondence between Frankl and Heidegger is in preparation, and that should make for some interesting reading uh, uh, within the next year and a half when it's published. In any case, um, something else that gets lost <clears throat> in translation, this I thou, we don't say thou anymore, but in German you can refer to somebody in a very intimate way, uh, or you can refer to them in a, in a formal way. <clears throat> Most of the time we use the formal, <clears throat> but what Buber is of course pointing to is this this intimate second person singular, thou, you, um, that <clears throat> could not happen, uh, could not occur, were it not for this initial being with that Heidegger uh, had articulated in his fundamental ontology. Let's pause just to say a little more about Dasein, just to be sure there are no misunderstandings so that we can see how Dasein's analysis is different from the forms of other forms of existential analysis, and for that matter, other modal any other modality of psychotherapy, uh, in my view, including psychoanalysis. Every instance of Dasein begins to sound easier to be at home with if you if you repeat it a few times. Every instance of Dasein unfolds as a concrete life a biography that begins with the event of birth. But this is what is remarkable about Dasein um, and may have slipped uh, out of the picture of much of existential analysis um, uh, for having uh, been forgotten. Dasein is genderless, sexless, without race or ethnicity, talent, good or bad genes, and all the rest. Um, if you want to take the perspective of the natural sciences, which by the way are possible without Dasein, a zygote, a simple zygote with its XX or XY chromosomes is already Dasein. Uh, the embryo, even before it differentiates into male and female at about six weeks, is Dasein. Um, it being with is implicit uh, from the beginning. Uh, there's a very interesting um, uh, discussion of this um, on, on, on just when we can say Dasein uh, originates, and it certainly originates in the womb. Uh, embryogenesis and intrauterine life, fetal life that eventuate in birth and a human life with a history begins to unfold, that begins to unfold already implies Dasein. Existing and existing already implies existence, Dasein. Those of us who are Dasein's analysts then never forget that sitting across from us, though embodied as male or female, Caucasian or black, Hispanic or Muslim, gay or straight, is in the first instance Dasein, which is indifferent to the human being who unfolds as a life, the life of detail uh, that interests us so much. To put this otherwise, perhaps too technically, but on the basis of what I said a little bit more, uh, a little bit earlier, ontologically speaking, that is with respect to possibility, there is not first a person of flesh and blood sitting there before me, but instead a Dasein. The existing of which unfolds, the existence of which unfolds. Ontically speaking, however, that is with respect to the actualities of that person who's there with all of the accidents of her fate, right? Having been born in a certain 
place in a certain time, in a certain era, with certain parents, um, with, with the, uh, the possibility of being five, uh, uh, seven instead of four, 11, such as my grandma was. Uh, from that perspective, there is, of course, also, in quotes, a living, breathing human being. But here is the key. Uh, in the order of the real, the ontological takes precedence over the ontic. While in the order of experience, the ontic reality takes precedence and is necessary for us to see the ontological status of that living, breathing, experiencing actuality. So just to illustrate and make this, bring this a little bit down to earth. Um, here are two ex invented examples of such ontic reality. Um, a young man, let's say, who was born in Scarborough into a Protestant family who has no interest in literature and philosophy, but prefers to tinker with cars, who is of above average intelligence, has brown hair, big hands, speaks quietly. There's an, an ontic uh, actuality. How about this? A middle-aged woman who was born in London into a wealthy Catholic family to a Pakistani father and a mother whose family stretches back through countless generations of local landowners. You can bring to mind any such example from, from uh, your own practice. Now comes the crucial question. Uh, from these two examples, uh, or from the examples of the hundreds of people that all of you together uh, and we have, have, have met with, what matters more for the therapeutic endeavor? The Dasein? or the existence, the, uh, the existing, the existence, the existing. The Dasein or the flesh and blood other existing human being there in his or her existing existence. What matters more, the ontological structure, Dasein, just to put this in slightly different terms, or the who, the existence, the existing in his or her uniqueness? The answer, neither. Both are equally important. But for the Dasein's analyst, her phenomenological gaze focuses on the existence, the Dasein of the other, not on his or her being existing existence. So you'll notice another problem of language. In the previous discussion, it's liable to trip us up, but it's easy enough to sort out, I think. If we dispense with the uh, uh, awkward term Dasein and settle on existence as a good English word for it, understood in a Heideggerian sense, we see that it is contrasted with existing. I'm repeating, but I hope for a positive outcome. Recall then Heidegger's sentence, the essence of existence is in its existing, its existence. In the history of existential analysis in general and of Dasein's analysis in particular, which I think you might begin to see are perhaps in, in many ways quite different. Another linguistic conflation of usage led to quite a lot of confusion. Um, so let me once again go over the sentence a bit more slowly since everything depends upon what it communicates in order to appreciate what's special about Dasein's analysis. To smooth the way, let me offer an alternative translation of Dasein. The word itself compounded of the word, the adverb da, by the way, which can mean here, there, or both here and there. And even when, 
under certain circumstances. So it has a spatial and a temporal sense, da, and the verb to be. It can therefore nicely be translated as being there, um, or uh, there being, which is a little more awkward, there being. The latter is the choice of the great Heidegger scholar, psychoanalyst and Daseins analyst, Father William Richardson, uh, who's rendering actually God Heidegger's approval, there being. Um, well, in terms of the therapeutic setting with this new translation, we can say, seen ontologically, being there in the full reality of her existing, existent, the analyst of being there, the Daseins analyst, is there da, with another instance of being there, another Dasein, that's you or me, who is also there in the full reality of his or her existing existence. Seen ontically, there is the being of the other, an embodied who of flesh and blood, who for some remarkable reason has come to spend an hour or so with you or me. When the situation is therapeutic, something more is going on <clears throat> than in nearly every other everyday human encounter of Dasein and Dasein. So you can breathe a sigh of relief. I'm al almost finished with the with the philosophical part. What is that therapeutic something? It's easy to formulate, and this would be um, a, a pretty basic statement uh, of Dasein's analysis. As I understand it, Dasein's an analysis is the freeing up of the structure of the possibility of existing, namely the freeing up of the existence of the other. But what about this existing, this who? Again, isn't he or she also some sort of what, a being that has come to us? I return to one of those examples. It's an, this ontic reality, uh, something we have to reckon with. I'll take you into my, my consulting room. If, if we give one of those two individuals, um, I'll take the uh, chap from Scarborough. If we give him the appropriate cue that indicates our attentiveness and openness to him, the young man will tell us many things. Perhaps he cannot sleep, and when he does, he has terrible nightmares. He will tell us many things if we have made it comfortable for him to do so, by reassuring him that anything goes verbally, anything goes between us. We thus invoke the fundamental rule of psychoanalysis. Here are the connections. Uh, uh, one of the principal connections uh, between psychoanalysis and Dasein's analysis uh, comes into view. As we listen, we begin to understand, however, the constraints of his Dasein. So, simple enough. This is a young man, so he'll never get pregnant. He will never experience menstrual periods. He has external genitals. Other details, though not as fundamental, are no less important. Um, you mentioned he's not very athletic, but very clever about fixing cars. He tells us he's not very wealthy, but his family inculcated in him as a sturdy work ethic. He attends mass every Sunday. He rather likes the look of men more than women, he tells me. He wishes he were taller, and so on. Some of this might be adjusted. He may convert to Islam, but within the limits of his anatomy and physiology, his ontic reality, he's a male. He has not acted on his sexual orientation because he's Catholic, but he might at some point. 
or he might take holy orders and become a priest. The more we talk, the more options for unfolding his life turn up. Some are newly discovered. Heidegger accounted for this, the constraints of circumstance, anatomical, constitutional, geographic, initial, cultural, when he introduced into his fundamental ontology another element of the structure of Dasein, which says that in each case we have been, the usage sounds strange, but we've been thrown into a situation. He, he uses this word thrown. A certain body, some innate tendencies, a locale, a time in history. Why did he choose this word, thrown? thrown into uh, Scarborough there, London or New York. Uh, he chose this odd formulation, this odd term thrown based on uh, a verb that means to be born. Um, it's not spelled out in being in time, but there's very clearly a connection in his mind between uh, the origin of uh, Dasein uh, and the particular situation that, that everybody uh, finds herself in or himself in. The, if you'll recall, this is Geworfenheit, just means thrownness, having, having been thrown. These accidents of fate mean that each existence, each existing, will be unique and that some actualities, as we saw in the example, are precluded. And that will be true for every human being. Each biography with its world is different from that of each other human being's biography with its world. In this sense, we are not the same. On the other hand, in as much as each of us first exists, we are all the same. It's to the latter that Dasein's analysis is directed. And this is what distinguishes it from psychiatry, existential analysis, and every other form of psychotherapy, counseling, coaching, education, social work available to us. I promise to be brief. What remains is to describe the goal of Dasein's analysis and to say something about what being a Dasein analyst means. For Dasein's analysis, we've seen each human being is unique among all other humans, other human beings, not only given his or her thrownness, but also in that he or she is never someone once and for all and as such. until the moment of death. 